Let's end the hour with a curtain call. Your front row ticket to some of the hottest shows on Broadway and beyond. This morning, we are thrilled to welcome two Broadway legends, Kelly O'Hara and Brian Darcy James. They star in the new musical, Days of Wine and Roses, which is based on a 1958 teleplay and 1962 film of the same name. It's about a couple in New York in the 1950s falling in love and forming a family while wrestling with alcohol addiction. The show has earned rave reviews. The New York Times branded it a critic's pick, calling the performances superb and those superb performances. <laughs> Performers join us now. Congratulations on the show. It is so incredibly powerful. It, Kelly, it's, it's maybe not a topic that naturally lends itself to a musical, but I understand this is like an idea you had many years ago while working with Brian. Tell us where the idea came from to do this show. Yeah, you know, I think of music as, uh, I love musical dramas. You know, we think of musical theater often and put it in the comedy category, which I love as well. But um, I'm also from the opera world a little bit. I got my degree in that. And so I really love uh, taking a story to the next step with music. And so when I thought about this one, some of the unspoken things about this particular situation lend themselves well to being musicalized. And, um, you know, so I asked Adam Gettle, who wrote The Light in the Piazza, which is another show I did, around 2002. We had just finished a show called Sweet Smell When you Success. were a teenager. When I was three. <laughs> um, I said, what about, what about musicalizing this show for Brian and me? And, and we, he liked the idea. And gosh, it, it took a while, but here we are. Here you are. And, and also people did comment on the fact that they thought you look like Lee Remick, you look like Jack Lemmon, who were in the original movie. That helped too, didn't it? Uh, yeah, you know, the imagination can... Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, clearly this is a lot about how much you love working with each other. What is it about your just relationship on stage that clicks so much, Brian? Well, you know, like Kelly said, we, we did this, this great show 20, some 20 years ago, and that's how we really kind of forged our, our friendship and our working relationship. And over those 20 years, we've never really done a show, a proper show uh, like that, uh, a Broadway show. Uh, we've done recordings, we've done concerts, we've done readings. So we've, we've definitely been each, in each other's, um, you know, uh, orbit as friends and colleagues. And so when this started kind of bubbling up, it was, um, it was great. And I will say that, that doing the show every night with Kelly and seeing your friend and seeing also, uh, I'm a fan of Kelly's. Uh, so to be able to see the work that she's doing um, in this show in particular is, is thrilling because uh, it's, I don't know, it's something that I've never seen her do. And I think audiences haven't seen her do as well. So it is a, um, it's it's a kind of a, a, um, a t two things. It's it's cheering your friend on and just being so proud of your friend, but also knowing that you're in the company of of greatness. And and so nice. this 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 kind of relationship that we have on stage is one that I've never experienced before in terms of the characters and how they bounce off each other. The audience really can feel it. This is obviously not a high energy pop show. Talk about the music and how do you get that tone just right? You know, um, both Craig Lucas, our book writer, and Adam Gettle uh, are just extraordinary at telling specifically very human stories. You know, these people, I think some people feel the show so deeply and dramatically because it feels so human. It doesn't feel sort of like an archetype of a, a person, but yet you're getting to know these two people very deeply and intimately. And so it's really on the page. You know, the, the, the music is underneath us, sort of swelling, the words that we say. Um, but the tone is also what Brian was saying. This is a personal and professional sort of collaboration of, of safety, friendship, trust. Um, we, we are very much not these people. And yet, um, if we bring ourselves to the table um, in the trusted way that we are together, um, the tone kind of, it, it, it works for itself. It just sort of takes us and goes. And, and, um, but I really lean on that great material. You know, it's already there for us if we just trust it. Can I add to also, in terms of tone, I mean, we have an incredible director in Michael Greif, who mm -hmm. his job is basically to see what's happening with every element of the production, our performances, the company's performances, the physical aspects of it, how it moves, how everything is, is um, presented and uh, it ultimately is delivered. So his eye, um, not only in, you know, speaking personally, his ability to kind of monitor and calibrate what we're doing to... To, to have the story kind of reveal itself 
in the proper way. Mm -hmm. um, that takes an expert eye, and we have that in Michael. So that, that I think, in terms of tone, I think that is um, our ace in the hole. One of the best directors out there. Mm -hmm. And he's got about 17 Broadway shows. I was shows about to say, he right. is a busy man <laughs> this <laughs> season. <laughs> Google it. Um, yeah. Alcohol addiction, I mean, it is an issue that affects nearly every family. What are you hearing from people who see this show? Do they talk about that and the impact that, that this has on them and the impact your show then has on them? We've had, I'm, I've had the most amazing conversations of my career um, with all people, but especially I'm finding with young people. We have a generation now which is the first sober curious generation ever. Um, we, we know so much more about alcoholism now. We know so much more about um, the different programs one might go into it if, if they suffer from alcoholism. At this time in, in our show, nobody knew about this. And so now we're talking to people who lived through it, children of people who've lived through it, people who are attached to it. Um, there are some people who come and have a, uh, really see the hope and the joy in the show. Um, there is a lot of that. Talk about tone. There's, there's a lot of different things happening because it's a human life that we're talking about. Two, three, four human lives in our show. Um, but I, I think that... Um, I, I think that the, the conversations about what it, how it affects people are so different and vast that it's making me feel like I'm doing one of the more purposeful things of my career, you know? Yeah. Brian, we have like 15 seconds left here, but anything else you want to add to that? Well, just um, the idea that when we do get to meet people and they, and they have a reaction that whether it is their own experience dealing with addiction or their, their relatives, Having that interchange and that kind of um, recognition is something that is very, very powerful, and, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. It's, it's, we're, we're doing our job, and, and the message is the show is getting across. Very good. All right, Kelly O'Hare, Brian Darcy, James, thank you both. And you can catch Days of Wine and Roses at Studio 54 through March 31st. That is going to do it for this hour of Morning News Now. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.